Living here in such a patriotic environment, we've come up with some ideas to get those red, white, and blue juices flowing in this patriotic edition of The Bite. I've asked our arts and crafts guru to join me and combine my palette delights with her arts and crafts creation. What you got for us, Amber? Well, first, I'll show you how to make a tiered serving platter. Best of all, you can make it with everyday items around the house, plus a few things from Kadena Arts and Crafts. And to go on our tiered serving platter, we'll make savory cupcakes made with olive oil and thyme. Not typical ingredients, but you'll find them delightful. And finally, to light up any patriotic party, we'll bake fantastic patriotic lanterns out of yarn. Kind of a new twist on paper mache. So get ready for a patriotic party on this edition of The Bite. Oh, Welcome to the bite. Here we are with Amber, the inventor of creations. How are you doing today, Amber? I'm doing good. I'm doing yeah. good. And we're throwing a patriotic party. So we're going to be making a cupcakes tier to start out with. And of course, what does a cupcake tier need? Cupcakes. Exactly. So then we'll be making a savory thyme cupcake. And then finally, we're going to make a beautiful yarn lantern to really light up your party. Yes. <laughs> so let's get started on our cupcake tier. So what are all these supplies? This is mm -hmm. the stuff you need for your cupcake tier. It's very simple, very basic. Um, you have three plates, various sizes. Um, you can do them in ceramic, mm -hmm. plastic, glass, metal even. Um, and then you pick two cups. Um, I like to do ones with stems. I think it adds a little bit of flair to oh, yeah, the definitely. cupcake stand. Um, and then the last thing is your glue. Ah, and what kind of glue is this? This is E6000. Um, it's very potent, <laughs> so make sure that whatever you're using it for, you're in a very well ventilated area. <laughs> um, but, and make mm -hmm. sure also whatever glue you choose will glue the materials you chose. Oh, because it's metal or plastic. Yes. Got it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, we also want to put food on this, right? So Exactly. So you mm -hmm. definitely want to make sure that it's safe for food consumption. Okay, wonderful. And where can I buy this glue? This is actually at the Arts and Crafts Center. Oh, perfect. But where is that? Is that on Kadena Air Base? Or? It is. It is right across from the BX. So oh, there's a convenient. big, big <laughs> sign. Can't miss it. So, oh, wonderful. Um, they have a couple different sizes, so you can choose if you want to do a big project or a little project. <laughs> so... So all these plates and cups, could I buy these secondhand, say from a thrift shop or the Chibana flea market yes. maybe? Yes. Um, people are always getting rid of their plates and cups oh, yeah. before they PCS, so oh, that'd be definitely. a great place to do it. Oh, yeah. Outdoor Rack every month a few times does a Chibana flea market on the weekend, so you should definitely check it out because people are PCSing and they want to get rid of their plates and cups and yeah. that'll be your next treasure for your creation, right? Exactly, <laughs> yes. So we're going to go ahead. Um, Definitely mm -hmm. want to make sure when you're doing this that <laughs> it's nice and stringy. Um, you glue around the rim mm -hmm. instead of on the plate just so you can make sure that you're getting um, a good seal. And it's just pretty, pretty basic. Just make sure you're getting a pretty good amount all the way around. And it can be messy, but that makes it Well, it's makes not it going to show, right, because the glue's clear. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. I always like to choose a glue that's going to clear, uh, dry clear. Um, that way, if you're doing a colored plate, mm -hmm. you're not going to have, you know, a white glue or something crazy showing up. So we're using clear plates today, but say after your party, could you perhaps paint, like spray paint your tiered? Yep, they have um, they have special glue mm -hmm. that you can use to do um, like metal or metal yeah. or or plastic, and then it's just a simple. Make sure it's nice and centered. Ah, oh, perfect. And glue it down. And if you if you don't feel like you got enough glue, you can always go back around mm. the edges and just um, get strings everywhere. <laughs> um, and just make sure that it's a nice and nice and right, solid. Fabulous. So. so then you go ahead and do the second tier, right, with the plate. Yeah, and it's just another. Mm -hmm. Now, really? we're going to use cupcakes for this today, but what else could you use a three-tiered device? I have seen people mm -hmm. use this in their, their bathrooms. They've done metal ones, mm -hmm. um, and they've actually put, like, their 
curling irons and their flat irons on them. Um, you could use it in the bedroom, put your makeup really? or even jewelry. Oh, so you could be super organized then. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're pretty much any little thing you can come up with. You could even do uh, chips and chip dip. Oh, yeah. Like this one over here. So um, for this one, you actually just used a bowl instead of the top plate? Yep, yeah, to put the chip dip in, and then um, you can do chips around the side. Well, this is great just for a snack or a party. So I could just imagine some wheat thins right here, maybe uh, a little artichoke dip in the bowl. That sounds so <laughs> good. So just to finish around the edge. All right, that looks perfect. You know, I just love these tiered devices because if you've ever had high tea, it's so elegant. You could put little pettifors or, you know, those brownie bites that are all the rage right now. Yeah. Those are so easy. You could put a little brownie bites and then put a little Oreos and then kids could love it. Oh, even. yeah. You know, yeah. this is, and it's perfect mm -hmm. height for them too. Yeah, so. you could paint your kid's favorite color and use it for their birthday party. It's really great. And what I like is that you could do this any size. You can use little bitty bitty mm -hmm. plates. You could do huge platter <laughs> plates. You know, it's it's whatever you have that you want to use. Well, so. this looks fantastic, Amber. Yeah, it's very simple. So, and that's it. Um, I do suggest mm -hmm. letting it dry for at least 48 to 72 hours um, so that, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's completely dry and safe. But after that, then... It's complete. It's Great. done. Have fun. <laughs> well, we'll be right back after these messages with our cupcakes. They're going to be a savory thyme cupcake. If you haven't tried a savory cupcake, it's a little unique, but it's incredible. So we'll be right back after these messages. I don't know about you, but we are serious about working out. And we're serious about our gear, too. We want the very best shoes and accessories. No off the rack gear for us. The Reisner Sports Pro Shop is the only place on Okinawa we get top of the line workout gear. No matter what the sport, the Reisner Sports Pro Shop has us covered. Right guys? That's right. The Reisner Sports Pro Shop, next to the Kadena Tennis Center. It's a good looking bunch of guys. Let me try that. Ice, the customer feedback tool with muscle. Get the power. We made our cupcake tiers for a patriotic party, and now we have to make our cupcakes. cupcakes. Right, so we're gonna make a thyme cupcake with olive oil and lemon zest. And with it, we're gonna make a strawberry balsamic whipped cream frosting. So the great thing about savory cupcakes, if you've ever had them, no. is that, you know, we're used to chocolate and vanilla, but the savory cupcakes are very unique. They're very mm -hmm. unique, and I never would have thought to put you know, savory and cupcake in the same oh, sentence. Oh, definitely. And so. using herbs and olive oil, it makes it a little healthier and it gives it a flavor. And if you've never tried it, you definitely should because it just comes together beautifully. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to try oh, yeah. it. So, so let's let's do this. Let's get started. So first, we have our wet ingredients and our standing mixer. So I'm going to just put our standing mixer on low, and I'm going to add our olive oil. So some nice extra virgin olive extra oil. Extra virgin, of course. This adds a lot of moisture, a lot of texture. And here we have some melted butter. This is just a tablespoon, so not a lot of fat in this. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and here we have our, this is skim milk. You know, just to add a little more moisture. Can you to use whole milk if you oh, want? Oh, definitely. Okay. It'll, it'll probably, if anything, make it taste a little richer. Okay. <laughs> and then we have. Uh, two eggs. So I'm just going to go ahead and crack these eggs. Are they medium, large? Like I usually use large. Okay. Um, some people think, you know, the be bigger the egg, the better your baking goods will taste. <laughs> That's, I guess, um, a good... And the funny thing, actually, in Asia, like in Japan, the eggs are smaller. Than they are. The They're States. always so much smaller yes. than what I expect to... They actually are when you weigh them, too, in grams. They're smaller. So... Here we have a whole lemon, and we're just going to zest it, and it'll only take about a tablespoon of zest. And I really would suggest 
zesting this yourself and not using oh, lemon juice definitely. or a concentrate because it adds a lot of flavor. Nothing beats and, fresh lemons. I mean, look, that took 10 seconds. So oh, I know. why not do it with the fresh flavor of lemon? All right, so our wet ingredients are looking wonderful. So let's go ahead and mix our dry ingredients. Okay, what should I start with first? All right, why don't you go ahead and just add our all-purpose flour okay. to our bowl. You always want to mix your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients separately so that everything gets incorporated. Okay. All right, wonderful. And then you can go ahead and add our sugar. Okay, lots of sugar. Well, yes, even though they are savory cupcakes, we want it to taste good. <laughs> you have to <laughs> Gotta add be some sweet sugar. Still. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, when I first heard of savory desserts, I was actually at my wedding tasting. And yeah. yeah. So that, go ahead and add our baking That's powder. Baking. Yep. Okay, baking powder. And I thought, savory, oh, I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> you know, I'm more of a chocolate person. Salt. Go salt. ahead and add our okay. salt. Perfect. So I thought, I don't know about the savory olive oil cake. It was actually an olive oil strawberry shortcake. So this is kind of a play off that. And we can go ahead, too, and add our dried herbs. It's just a little dried thyme. This is the okay. secret ingredient. So can, are you chopping this up smaller, or are you just leaving it as I'm, is? I'm just leaving it as it is, because the batter will kind of take the flavor of the thyme. Um, of course, you could always use fresh thyme, but I would use about double the amount of fresh thyme. OK. Yeah, Because it's not as potent. All right, that looks great. Well, the neat thing about savory desserts is it always surprises everyone how tasty a yes. savory dessert can be. And it's just so unique and gourmet. It makes you look like a foodie. Right? <laughs> and it's good everybody, to be a foodie. <laughs> everybody wants to look fancy. All right, that looks perfect. And I'm just going to take with my spatula our flour and add it in slowly. You can do this in a few increments if you like. I'm just going to slowly add it to our mixer. Getting a little dusty over we here. Yeah. <laughs> That's half the fun about cooking though. Oh, Making yeah. a little bit of a mess. The best part is you get a little flour in your hair and then you wear it all day long. <laughs> right. All right. That looks perfect. All right. So get that all mixed up in our mixer. Want to make sure everything's incorporated. See, that just smells amazing. Oh, yeah. They need to come out with smell o vision That just smells <laughs> oh, awesome. smell o vision would be awesome. <laughs> all right, so now that we have this all mixed together, I'm just going to take a normal tablespoon, and I am going to put these in our cupcake pan. Now, we're using miniature cupcakes today. For the miniature little cupcake exactly, tier. Exactly, because our tier is a little on the smaller side, so we want our cupcakes to fit perfectly. Here we go. And you want to get them about two thirds full is best. Um, so they just pop up to the top nice and fluffy. Don't worry if you get a little on the side. Right. <laughs> you can lick that up later. And we're using red and blue linings because this is for our patriotic party. Yes. All right. So, I mean, I can smell the lemon. Right I can now. too. I can too. It's, it's so potent. It's wonderful. I can actually even smell the thyme a little bit. Oh, yeah. I like it. All right, so Amber, we already preheated our oven to yes. 350 degrees, so you could just put this in the oven. For okay. miniature cupcakes, we're going to bake it for about 15 to 20 minutes, but for normal cupcakes, you would want to bake it for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. And while these are baking, we're going to show you the recipe on the screen, and then we're going to come back and ice them. to make our strawberry balsamic vinegar whipped cream frosting. Our cupcakes are done. We iced a few of them, but we left a few for our frosting. So we're okay. going to make a batch of frosting here. Amber, if you wouldn't right. mind, let's just, we have a chilled bowl. 
Okay. And we're going to go ahead and add our heavy whipping cream to okay. the bowl. Now, does the bowl need to be chilled? It doesn't necessarily, but it really helps with that whipping cream, you know, picking up some air and becoming light and fluffy. Okay. And we can go ahead and just add our normal, regular, granulated old sugar. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we want to go ahead and whip this up until it has some nice, soft peaks. So go okay. ahead. Whip away. <laughs> All right. Careful of a little splatter here. <laughs> Are we putting this on the highest setting? Yep. We want to go ahead and put it on the highest setting. We want that that heavy whipping cream to get nice and fluffy. <laughs> okay. This sounds like holiday noise. Oh, it? <laughs> it does. I woke up to this every morning. Oh, you're you're too oh. lucky. Oh. I know. This is messy. Oh, yeah. You can use a bigger bowl or whatever you need to make this a little less splatter prone. <laughs> That's great. You can really, you see it progress. And it's you like do. It's more and more thick and nice. And it really is nothing like real whipped cream. There's nothing better than homemade. No. No. It isn't. Uh, cool Whip and everything, you could use Cool Whip and just mix your flavors, like the strawberries and also vinegar. But we love heavy whipped cream cream. All, All right. right. That looks great. Oh, so, look at that. Go ahead and lift that up. There's That's our perfect. soft peaks. It got everywhere, oh, but it's going to be so tasty. Yes. You can eat it off her shirt. Right? <laughs> All okay. right. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just add some balsamic vinegar. Never would have thought to do that. You know, the neat thing about it is you can't really taste it as a strong flavor. It's just a hint of it. But okay. What is that? I like it, but I don't, not quite sure. <laughs> like a what mystery it is. flavor. Yes. And here we have just some strawberry puree. So I used some frozen or fresh strawberries and just put them in a blender or a standing mixer okay. to get them nice and pureed. Um, you also could use uh, basically strawberry jam or jelly, yeah. preserves, whatever I think works. Fresh oh. strawberries are better. Okay, that looks great. So we just want to kind of fold this together. Our strawberry and balsamic vinegar. All right, now we have a perfect. Oh, that looks so good. Whipped cream frosting with a lot of flavor. <laughs> I'm I'm all for that. Yes, and I already have a pre-filled bag of this frosting. Uh, we have a lovely little star tip. You can get these at the Arts and Crafts store. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and on these mini cupcakes, I'm gonna put maybe a couple tablespoons of frosting. Okay. <laughs> Unless you're like me. I love a ton of frosting. My, my ratio right. of cupcake to frosting is, is a little off. Oh, yeah. and Not, the, not the normal for, for Two most. to one frosting, that works, too. <laughs> and you know the nice part about mini cupcakes is this is so fast. You can just make a hundred of these oh, in a super nanosecond. Quick. second. All right, so now we're all set for our beautiful cupcake tier. Yes, let's For get the that final in presentation. Because, you know, presentation is always half the battle. It is, yes. <laughs> all right, so... Amber and I are just going to put these on our tier. I think the clear with the, the red, white, and blue looks oh, yeah. so pretty. It does. Let's see. Perfect. Looking great. Make another one. Yep. I think that that's looks good. wonderful. So here's our finished Savory Time Cupcakes with our homemade cupcake tier. And stay around because we're going to finish off this patriotic party with a beautiful yarn lantern that will light up your party. <laughs> Escape the hustle and bustle. Encounter the serenity of emerald waters laced with pristine sandy beaches. Experience the enchantment of our Pacific Island paradise. Come to Okuma and let your spirit soar. embellishes the rich and colorful culture of Okinawa. 
Okuma offers an alluring array of water activities. Camp on the beach or unwind in modern accommodations. Hike, golf, or just relax and work on your tan in lush tropical surroundings. Okuma is more than a vacation spot. It's an experience. Eat your heart out, Hawaii. The Reisner Juice Bar. Wowie zowie. As everyone talking. Sweet sassy molassy. Jeez Louise. Before or after a workout. Great googly moogly. Part Damn. my hair. Holy shnike. Or just because they are so tasty. Shut my mouth. Lick my leg. <laughs> Shazam. Okay, so good. Doodly. Stay sharp with tasty treats from the Reisner Juice Bar. What you talking about? Welcome back to the bite. We're gonna finish off our patriotic party. And now that we have a cupcakes and a cupcake tier, we're gonna go ahead and make our beautiful yarn lantern. So yes. Amber, what are we gonna do? How do you make a lantern completely made out of yarn? It's it's very <laughs> simple. It's it's a little mm -hmm. messy, but that's the fun of it. Um, you have yarn. Okay. Good start. Um, you can <laughs> you can do um, string. You could do hemp. You could do any type of a string material. Um, you could even do ribbon if you wanted. Really. Um, but get mm -hmm. your yarn. Get a balloon mm -hmm. or a ball of some sort. So like one of the little kitty bouncy balls could work too. Anything that can be deflated. Mm -hmm. um, you want paper towel or newspaper because it's messy. Scissors, maybe a tack to pop the balloon. The end, and then uh, some glue. This okay. is uh, tacky glue. This is clear tacky glue. Oh, okay. Um, all of these can be gotten, been could be found at the Arts and Crafts Center. Really? So we can purchase tacky glue, the yarn, the balloons, yes. everything. All of it at oh, the, the center. Um, again, though, your glue mm -hmm. is the most important. So make sure that it dries clear, and that it will dry hard, okay. so that um, the balloon holds its shape. All right. So it's going to so. be strong tacky glue. Yes. <laughs> so, and then when you're ready, you have your um, bowl to put it in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and we'll lay down our newspaper. All right. So just move this. So this is a little messy. So it is. This is it a is. great activity for kids, I imagine, right? They <laughs> would probably love this. This would be so much fun for the kids. So we already have a pre-made blown up balloon. So we'll go ahead and pull that out and we'll okay. have that off to the side ready. <laughs> um, in the meantime, you want to take your glue or your yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, set that and get that ready and then you mix your glue. Now I always like to put a little bit of water in mm -hmm. with my glue. Um, I find that tacky glue is just a little bit too tacky. Okay, so this water will really lighten it up yep. basically? Yeah, kind of just gives oh, it wow. a little bit of a creamier consistency. Oh, perfect. Um, so, and then this is the fun <laughs> part, just dive right in and just start oh, mixing it up. tacky fingers now. <laughs> yes. Um, you're gonna get this everywhere. There's no, there's no avoiding it. But I like to get messy. So. <laughs> That's part of the fun of it. It is <laughs> getting getting your hands in there and getting dirty. So once you've got it mixed up and it's a pretty, pretty well mixed, um, go ahead and grab your <laughs> string or your yarn. Um, the next step is the most important, obviously. You want to get the glue on the string. Okay. Um, you can do this in a couple different ways. It's however you want. Um, I prefer to do little bits at a time um, and just soak it in there, get it nice and, and covered, and then take your end Ooh. and just kind of squeegee it off okay. so that you don't have a whole glob of glue. So we're wringing it out, getting rid of the yep. excess glue. Great. And this this takes a while to dry, mm -hmm. so don't worry about while you're doing this, your project, you know, drying <laughs> on you and, and, and ending. Um, so once you got that, find your end right there. Ah, there we go. Grab your balloon and just start wrapping it around. Okay, so this balloon, this is a little more round. Do you not blow it up all the way? You, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that it stays circular. <laughs> okay. um, if, if you leave it, I know balloons have a tendency mm -hmm. to get kind of oval. Um, if you let it get oval, then your yarn doesn't really stick very well. Well, this looks wonderful. So this yep. is basically paper mache, mm -hmm. but with yarn. Yes, and it's, it's very simple. Um, just keep wrapping. Mm -hmm. I know that it 
it will be difficult at first. Mm -hmm. I had the hardest time the first time I wrapped my <laughs> balloon. Um, it takes a little bit getting used mm -hmm. to and getting into the groove, but um, just keep wrapping it um, round and round. And then when you feel like you've wrapped it enough, you should end up with something like this. Oh, wow, that looks amazing. Yeah. Can I touch it? <laughs> yes, yes, have at All it. Right. Um, it's very hard. I would suggest once you've wrapped it mm -hmm. fully, cut the string um, and then kind of wrap it around to keep the ends together so it doesn't mm -hmm. unravel. And then just hang this up somewhere um, so that it has nothing touching it and it can dry for at least 24 hours. Okay, so for at least 24 hours, yeah. you just hang it by the end of the balloon? Yeah, I just tape mm -hmm. it to something. And we don't want any string around the end, right? No, you leave mm -hmm. the hole open. Um, I, you can draw a circle if you want, but um, I just kind of eyeball it. This is so that you can place a candle in it or hang it from. So. Oh, great. So that's where our light goes in. <laughs> yes, yes. And I definitely suggest don't use an actual candle. Mm -hmm. um, definitely make sure that if, if you put something in there, do like the flameless candles. Do you know where I can get flameless candles they on Bay? actually sell those at the Arts and Crafts Center really? as well. They, they do. do. Yes. Arts and Crafts is such a great store. I know. They have, <laughs> they have everything mm -hmm. you need, so you are good to go. So we're going to go ahead and pop the balloon. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready for it. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I hate popping things. Okay. <laughs> oh, <Dang>. okay. <laughs> that was a little anticlimactic, but that's good. So. As you can see, <laughs> the balloon will not completely deflate on its own. It does stick to the sides. Wow, so it's slowly going in. Yes. Um, just go oh. ahead and very carefully peel it. Um, it will stick. That's kind of a nice, crunchy sound. Right? <laughs> it, it's, this is part of my favorite part. But uh, once you go ahead and you, you go through all the way around and you get it pulled from the sides, which takes wow. a while, so we're going to set that great. off and let that continue. And you continue. can do it in any color. How yes. awesome. Um, oh. And when you're all done, you will have these. Oh, finished yarn lanterns. These are beautiful, Amber. I love them. Well, these are going to top off our patriotic party perfectly. We'll just put in some flameless candles and yeah. it'll be a hit. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It thank was great you. to learn all these party tricks. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget to hit your Arts and Crafts Center yes. and uh, pick up all this stuff so mm -hmm. you can do your own creations. Exactly. And if you missed any of these recipes or how to make these great items today, just check our magazine, Venture Magazine, or just go online to kadinaforsupport.com. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time on The Bite.